Is nature as straight as we think it is? And are the assumptions that we have around gender and sexuality in the natural world actually true? Today, we're delving into the world of queer ecology. I'm here on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen and Wasanich peoples with a researcher who explores how queerness fits into the natural world. I'm Ms. Javen Lupino-Smith and I'm an artist and a researcher and I work in the fields of critical geography and queer ecologies. So Straven, what is queer ecology? Right, so queer ecology is taking some of the notes from queer theory and applying them to the natural world or the so-called natural world. And what this means is breaking down our preconceived notions or some of the conventions we might think of in science, in biology, uh, and thinking more about how um, queerness is totally present in the natural world. Science has identified over 1,500 species that display homosexual behaviours and others that express a variety of genders, many of which live here in Canada. For years, research on sexual orientation and gender expression within the natural world has been limited, as society's negative biases about queerness has often stood in the way of the work that's taking place. How do we put our own biases about gender and sexuality on the natural world? And does it actually do any damage? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I think there was a long time where actually people would be doing studies on animals and witness homosexual and homosocial behavior. And then even if they wrote a paper about it, it wouldn't be published. Yeah, and so what that means is that we're not getting the full picture of what these animals are doing, their behaviors, how they're interacting with the full ecology, how they interact with other organisms. And what that means is that we don't have a whole picture when we want to do work like conservation or other kinds of uh, interventions to help nature out. As part of their conservation work, Straven applies queer ecology to local and less studied wildlife species. So one example of uh, queerness in nature is uh, actually right here. Uh, it's the little brown bat. Bat boxes are set up around Vancouver Island to provide safe places for bats to roost during the day. They also act as an important site for scientists like Estraven to study bat behavior. And it turns out that homosexual and homosocial behaviors are much more common than we thought. Homosexual and homosocial behaviors have been reported among many bat species, including the little brown bat. And despite this research being relatively new and often overlooked, the studies are estimating that up to 35% of their sexual activity is same sex, although this is not well studied. A lot of the animals that don't fit our ideas about what we want to see reflected in nature in general have been ignored. And I think that's another part of queer ecology is really trying to look deeper into the ecologies themselves and look at things in relationship. And also to look at all these species that weren't as exciting or weren't considered as cute, even though I think bats are very cute. I think they're very cute. Uh, they're it's a bit harsh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but maybe weren't as charismatic as far as, again, those more dominant or conventional scientific ideas. And there's also just ways where animals don't function the way that a nuclear family would. So I saw some hawks when we were uh, arriving here today. And, you know, in hawks, the female is actually much larger than the male, which might be something we wouldn't think about uh, in our idea of the gender binary and also sex binary uh, for humans. Or there's lots of what might be seen as uh, sexual behavior that doesn't necessarily have to do with reproduction, which also I think is something that's a big focus or has been a big focus in biology that uh, animals only behave or have sexual behaviors that have to do with reproduction, which just isn't true. Researchers once called homosexual behaviors in nature not normal or unnatural, but thanks to scientists like Estraven, we are beginning to recognize them as an important part of the life cycles of many species. So what does the future look like? You know, what role can queer ecology play uh, at a time of biodiversity loss and when we're looking at better protecting species and we, you know, we really need to be able to conserve wildlife? Yeah, so I think queer ecology gives us this really exciting critical framework to reimagine our relationship to land and to think about ourselves in our ecologies from our backyards to a place like this out in a park. And it's that really exciting and new way of engaging with things and to revisit that research that can give us, I think, some really interesting solutions as how to move forward. So it's official, nature is queer. And that's really important because by accepting it and applying queer ecology, we can improve our understanding of nature and better protect it. Queer ecology, it's gonna save the world. <laughs>